everyone and welcome to the new episode of Edu Katok. This is your host, Katrin De Leon. And for today's episode, we are going to interview an aspiring educator from Indora State University. Together, let us all welcome Miss Katrin Haneta. Hello everyone, this is Katrin Haneta and thank you for inviting me here in this program. And I hope na makapagbigyan ko ng insights about the concept of this episode will feature four questions which are all about the constructive history in teaching and learning mathematics. Question 1. In your own words, what is the constructive history all about? Yeah. So, um, in my own judgment, constructive history is a student-centered learning theory where learning happens when a student derives meaning or create knowledge from their experiences rather than of being spoon with the concepts and ideas coming from the others. For example, another sick child who inserted his finger on the electric pad na pie, and then um, he was hurt dahil na ipit yung kanyang um, daliri ng blade. And from that, he realized that inserting his finger on the fan while it is on is not safe and it can hurt his finger. And from that realization, the child will no longer attempt to insert his finger on the fan. And these concepts are derived from the child's personal experience. Yun yung isang um, halimbawa ng constructivism. So in the view of the classroom setup, the role of the students are the active creators of knowledge and understanding. Well, the important role the teachers play here is that they provide students opportunities for stimulating dialogue so that the knowledge and meaning could evolve and be constructed. So the teaching style here is more on creation of situations that could allow learners to create mental constructions. Question 2. Will you please expound why the constructive theory is applicable in teaching mathematics? It was mentioned in our module that constructive theory is appropriately aligned in teaching mathematics since math is cumulative and vertically structured display. And totoo naman yun. Which means na one acquires new knowledge in mathematics by building on the math that has been previously learned. Lalo na ngayon, ang ating curriculum is inspired. Talagang yung mga natututunan natin on the previous years are significant o kailangan natin matutunan ng ayos in order to deal with the higher maths na hindi tayo ganun nahihirapan. Maybe so, but it is also rooted on the fact that math is a human construct and not a weird discovery. It derives or originates from the evidences and constructions on which we math majors could relate. Imagine the difficulty we experience in learning mathematics when we are not actually doing or trying to solve it on our own, right? Mahirap. Moreover, most of the new concepts we are learning requires knowledge or problem-solving experiences from the other math concepts, like in our Calculus 3. And in order to fully understand it, it is important to construct knowledge from algebra, trigonometry, geometry, and many other math um, branches on which students are trying to make meaning and construct new knowledges from them. Kasi ang hirap kapag kung kailangan pa lang tayo magalang ng kalgo sa kapal lang uli natin didibihin ano ito sa algebra and sa trigonometry. So those are the reasons why um, for me it is applicable in teaching mathematics, yung constructivist theory because personally, ang hirap kong aralin ng math kung puro concepts lang or ideas lang yung ibinabado sa'yo. Um, the process, yung solving process, iba pa rin kapag yung, ikaw yung nagko-construct ng knowledge, nagbibigay ka ng meaning mula doon sa mga natutunan mo from the past na ay related pala itong mga ito, ay tagdi-tagdi pala talaga itong mga discipline ng math. So, doon mas na-acquire yung other Third question, what do you think would be the possible challenges in using constructivism in teaching mathematics? 
Yeah, so yeah, hindi naman nga nawawala kung may disadvantages, hindi na iwasan ang mga drawbacks or disadvantages. So, first first is that though it is good for math, chances are it does not fit to the learning styles of the students. For this, teachers must be fully aware of how math really works for her students para maiwasan niya. Second is that barriers for effective discussion may arise, especially during the group activities. The third one is that while it is good for others, some students may find the pacing of teaching too fast for them. Next is that while it is good to use those real life situations, merong mga estudyante na makikita ito as confusing or many subjective interpretations may arise and those underlying concepts na dapat talagang matutunan will remain unclear. So, yun din yung dapat iwasan. Another is that some students may feel frustrated, especially when they are seeing their classmates na nakaka-consult yung ganito knowledge or nag-gets ito parang nare-recall nila yung from their past experiences kasi syempre iba-iba ng experiences in learning mathematics yan hindi naman kasi mula grade 1 is magkaklase na sila so the tendency is that for those students na may insufficient um, learning experience about the matter may feel frustrated and nakakahina rin yun ng motivation at some point and lastly um, the teachers Mahihira, may mga teachers din na maninibago in using this approach, especially when they are used in the teaching, using the traditional method. They will be confused, some may be confused on when and why to use constructivist approach. Kailan nga ba dapat or pwedeng gamitin ang ganitong approach sa klaso. So, yun ang ilang sa mga kita kong challenges in using constructive history in teaching mathematics. Before the last one, describe how Dale's Cone of Experience is applicable in mathematics teaching and learning. So Dale's Cone of Experiences is a good way to understand the retention rate of the students when they just when they just read, see, hear, see and hear, say, say and do. Um, things inside the classroom and I believe that most of the concepts and processes in mathematics are best learned when the students are directly involved in the problem-solving process for example in our calculus 3 so reading the examples from our module as described in the phone um, only have 10% retention and seeing seeing while well hearing like when we um, when we are attending the Google Meet, heightened the retention rate. But of course, active participation during discussion and involving ourselves directly in the actual solving can actually boost our retention rate. So, so that is how um, Dale's Cone of Experiences is applicable in teaching and learning mathematics. Again, we are so glad to have you this afternoon, Miss Ananda. Thank you for sharing your insights about the constructive history. It's my pleasure to be here and thanks for having me in this episode of Edukadok. And that's all for today's episode of Edukadok. See you again on the next episode. Again, this is your host, Miss Kat Stay safe and thank you everyone.